The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Paulina Lovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, Camtel, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to lesson 9 of your distance learning session for Ordinary Level Economics. My name is Tapri Godwin Germany, your economics teacher for Form 5. Before we get to lesson 9 itself, we we'll start by correcting the assignment that we had in the previous lesson. In the assignment for the A part, you were expected to explain the objectives of a commercial bank and show how they conflict with each other. And B, explain how a commercial bank may reconcile its conflicting objectives. So for the answer to the A part, the objectives of commercial banks. First, we have liquidity. This has to do with having enough cash available to meet any demand for cash withdrawal by depositors. So it is the objective of the bank to ensure that at any one time, there is enough cash so that any person who deposit money in the bank, when the person comes for withdrawal, the money should be available. The next objective is the objective of profitability. This requires that the bank should, keep, should give out much loans. Uh, the more the bank gives out loans, the more it gets uh, interest, and that enables it to make profit. So profitability is an objective that requires that much loans should be granted. And the third objective is security. The bank must ensure that loans given out from accepted deposits are repaid in time. And to guarantee the security, banks usually ask for collateral, which is any asset that is given by the borrower, so that in the event of default of payment, that asset can be sold to recover the loan. Now, looking at the conflict between the objective, the first conflict we have there is a conflict of liquidity and profitability. Liquidity and profitability. To achieve liquidity, the bank must hold much cash. But this will uh, reduce profit since the amount left for lending will be small. So banks must give out as much cash as possible if they have to make profit. But when they give out as much cash, it means that the amount that will be left that will be required, uh, that when customers come for withdrawal, the amount will be available, that amount will be small, and it will increase the risk of uh, customers not meeting money when they come to break. So we see liquidity and profitability are conflicting. Give out much loans, small will be amount will be available for liquidity. If you want to ensure that there will be liquidity all the time, then you will not give out loans. And when the bank does not give out loans, then the objective of profitability is sacrificed. The next conflict between the objective is security and profitability. The need for collateral increases security, but unfortunately, this reduces the ability to borrow, thereby reducing profits. Why is this so? Because most customers do not have collaterals to back their loans, and because they don't have collaterals, the bank may not give the loan, and that will compromise the ability to make profit. But if the bank wants to insist to make more profit, then you give out the loans and ignore the collateral. But the risk is that uh, customers 
may take the money and then they may default payment. So that now creates a conflict between security and profitability. For the B part of the question, how then do banks reconcile this conflicting objective so as to ensure that at any one time there is liquidity and profitability? First, the bank should group the assets into liquid assets and illiquid assets. Next, the bank should arrange the assets from most liquid to most illiquid with a relatively small proportion as liquid assets. Remember, liquid assets are those assets that can easily be converted into cash without a significant loss in value. Cash itself is liquidity. So arranging the assets from the most liquid to the most illiquid, it means that we'll have cash and balance that the central bank those are the most liquid assets. And then money are called and short notes, very liquid, but earn some interest to the bank. Uh, <coughs> uh, bills discounted is another example of a liquid asset having a life of about 91 days. And then we have investments and uh, advances. Investment advances are illiquid assets. So the bank group the assets into liquid and illiquid assets, then it must ensure that it constantly replaces assets that are nearing maturity with illiquid assets. So as those illiquid assets are getting towards maturity, it will be replacing them with illiquid assets. That way, there is a continuous flow of liquidity and profitability. So look at the arrangement of the assets. Again, we have cash and balances at the central bank. We have money at call and short notice, which are essentially loans to discount houses. And then we have bills that are discounted, commercial bills like bills of exchange. We have our treasury bills. We have certificates of deposits. Those are bills that the bank will discount. And then these are liquid assets. The first four, cash, balances at the central bank, money at call and short notice, and then bills discounted. And then for the illiquid assets, we have investment, and then advances, they earn high rates of interest. So as assets are nearing uh, maturity, they are constantly being replaced with illiquid assets. That way, there is that guarantee of liquidity and profitability. So for the lesson, title, credit creation by commercial bank. So the text for our lesson 9 is, Created creation by commercial banks. This lesson is presented, will be presented according to the following plan. First, we'll look at the expected outcome. That will be followed by previous knowledge, the problem situation, the lesson itself as lesson activity. And then we'll look at the summary of the lesson. You we'll have some exercises and then assignment. For the learning outcome, by the end of this lesson, learners will be able to define creative creation and state the various methods of creative creation. Secondly, they will be able to illustrate the creative creation process and the limits on banks' ability to create credits. And finally, they will be able to calculate the maximum amount of bank deposits created from an initial deposit. Previous knowledge. Already, learners can use a list of assets and liabilities of the bank to establish the balance sheet of the bank and to calculate the cash ratio and the liquid asset ratio of the bank. Problem. Your father is a holder of a bank account in a local bank and wants to obtain a loan from the bank. But his account manager wants him to first deposit a certain initial amount in his account. Why should the account manager be insisting on this initial deposit? So the lesson that we have is credit creation. Of course, you see one of the ways by which banks create credit obviously or is certainly to accept deposits. But what exactly is credit creation? By definition, credit creation is the ability of banks 
to increase the part of money supply known as bank deposit. Remember that money supply is the total amount of money that is circulating in an economy at a particular time, which is made up of cash and uh, uh, bank deposits and other near monies. So, the critical creation here is the ability of banks to increase that part of money supply that is known as bank deposit, not to increase cash, because cash is made by government, minted, printed. But bank deposit is the money made by bank. So the ability of banks to increase that bank deposit is what we know as credit creation. Or oh, it is the creation of bank deposits by commercial banks. So again, credit creation is the ability of banks to increase the part of money supply known as bank deposits. Or oh, the creation of bank deposits by commercial banks. So how do banks create credit? Here we are looking at methods of credit creation. First, banks create credit by accepting deposits. When a customer makes a deposit in the bank, the bank opens an account in the name of that, uh, that, that customer and then deposits the amount in it. That means that bank deposits increase by the amount of money deposited. That way, bank creates credit. Already, when customer deposits money, bank deposit increases. Secondly, by granting loans, when the bank approves a loan for a customer, it opens an account in the name of the customer and then deposits the loan amount in that account from which the customer can withdraw using a check. So, by depositing that money in that account, bank deposit has increased. And thirdly, banks create credit by discounting bills, that is, the purchase of securities. When the bank discounts a bill, it means that it opens an account in the name of the customer who sold the bill and then deposit money in that account and that way bank deposit increases. So again, banks create credit by means of accepting bank deposit, by means of granting loans and by means of discounting bills. To understand the credit creation process, we work with a number of assumptions. So we call that assumptions of credit creation. The first assumption is that banks maintain a fixed cash ratio. In our model, we use 10% as the fixed cash ratio. So we're assuming here that banks maintain a fixed cash ratio of 10%. Secondly, we we'll assume that any loan granted by that bank must eventually find its way back into the bank as a new deposit when the loan is spent. For example, if a customer goes to the bank and borrows money and uses the money to buy maybe a television, then the shopkeeper who sold the television will get the money received from the sales of the television and deposit in his account in the bank. That means that any loan granted must eventually be redeposited in the bank. Assumption number three, there is no cash drain from the economy. It means that people don't borrow money and then spend the money out of the country. People don't leak the money away from the currency. So no cash drain. Cash drain sometimes may come as a result of balance of payment deficits where we pay too much for imports. But in this case, we assume that when people borrow money from the bank, spend it only within the economy, the money does not flow out of the economy. And finally, banks are always ready to lend and people are always willing to borrow. So it means that people in the economy make extensive use of the bank. People don't keep their money at home when they have money, they deposit it in the bank. And when they need money, they go to the bank and borrow. And the banks are always very ready to give out the loans. So these are four assumptions of credit creation. Maintaining a fixed cash ratio, loans granted must eventually be redeposited back into the bank, no cash drain, and customers making extensive use of the bank. So, how does the credit creation process work? We'll explain this process from the point of view of the table that we see on the board. Here we have client or customer, and then deposits 
require reserve for cash reserve, and then loans which are excess reserve. So we make the assumption that a customer called A deposits 100,000 francs in the bank. Since our assumption, cash ratio is 10%, it means that the bank will retain 10,000 francs for that deposit of 100,000 francs. And will give out the remaining 90,000 francs as loans. When this 90,000 francs loan that is granted is eventually spent, it will find its way back into the bank as a new deposit. So we see customer B deposit the 90,000 francs that was given as a loan and eventually spent on customer B will deposit the 90,000 francs in the bank. And then, since the bank was retained 10% of that deposit, it means that you will have a required reserve of 9,000 francs. And of the 90,000 francs, it's 1,000 francs will remain as excess reserve. And we assume that the bank gives out all its 1,000 francs as a loan. When that its 1,000 francs loan is spent, it will find its way back into the bank as a new deposit made by C. And C, customer C, or rather the bank, would maintain or retain 10% of that deposit of its 1,000 francs, which is 8,100 francs. I will give out the remaining 72,000 francs as loans. And you see this process of uh, granting loans to be redeposited can go on and on. So if we sum up the deposits so far, we'll have a total deposit of uh, 100,000 francs plus 90,000 francs plus 81,000 francs, giving 271,000 francs. This means that the bank has created an additional 171,000 francs. From the initial deposit of, of 100,000 francs, making a total deposit of 271,000 francs. But if you look at it carefully, you notice that all the money that the bank is giving out as a loan is coming from the initial deposit of 100,000 francs that the customer, the first customer, customer A makes. It therefore means that the bank, through this process of granting loans to be redeposited, has created credit, has increased the part of money supply known as bank deposits. But if this process were to go on and on and on, when uh, the bank grants loans is eventually redeposited after removing the 10%, then what will be the total amount of bank deposit to be created from that initial deposit of 100,000 francs? Here, we want to measure the total bank deposits created. And we use the formula Z equals to 1 over R times C, where Z there represents the maximum change in bank deposits. So if that process will go on and on and on and on, then what will be the maximum amount of bank deposits that will be created? It's presented by T. Around there is the cash ratio. Remember, cash ratio is the minimum percentage of total deposits that the bank must hold as cash, so as to meet any demand for cash by depositors. C is the initial deposit. Initial deposit. So in our model, that 100,000 francs is the initial deposit. And then R is the cash ratio, as we said. 1 over R is the deposit expansion multiplier, also known as the bank multiplier, the money multiplier. This measures the number of times that a given deposit will multiply or double itself so as to cause total bank deposits to change. So, given this formula, we want to look at this integration exercise to understand how banks will create credit to how the maximum amount of bank deposits can be calculated. Um, look at the problem. A bank in a single bank economy operates a cash ratio of 5%. If this bank receives a new deposit of 100,000 francs, one, calculate the maximum change in bank deposits that this bank can generate. And two, if instead the cash ratio is 10%, calculate the change in bank deposit to be generated. We go by the formula. Recall, Z, which is the maximum level of bank deposit, 
is equal to 1 over R, the one for R is the expansion multiplier, where R is a cash ratio, times C, where the C represents the initial deposit. So, if we have to substitute the items in the formula, then our R will be cash ratio is 5%. Uh, so the cash ratio is 5%. 5% is the same as 5 over 100, which is the same as 0 0.05. So that will be a cash ratio. And then C already is the initial deposit of 100,000 francs. So if we were to substitute this in the formula, then we'll have C equals to 1 over R, R is 0 0.05 times 100. Thousand francs. That would mean that our maximum level of land deposit would be 20 because 1 over 0.25 is 20 times 100,000 francs. And that would give us a uh, maximum level of land deposit 2 million francs. So, what does that mean? It means that the 100,000 francs deposited in the bank would eventually increased money supply to 2 million francs. So look at the B part of the question. If instead the cash ratio is 10%, what would be the change in bank deposits to be granted or generated? Again, we use the same formula. The formula remains Z equals 1 over R times C. But this time, our cash ratio is 10%. 10% or 10 over 100. Or uh, 0 0.1. So 10% is 0 0.1. That means our, uh, and remember that our, our initial deposit remains 100,000 francs. So we simply substitute. Z now becomes 1 over 0 0.1 times 100,000 francs. So that would mean Z equals to 10 times 100,000 francs which is equal to 1 million francs. So what have you observed here? We notice that when the cash ratio is small, the deposit for expansion multiplier will be half. So when cash ratio is 5%, deposit expansion multiplier is 20. And so maximum level of bank deposit created 2 million. When the cash ratio increases to 10%, Deposit expansion multiplier drops to 10. And so maximum amount of bank deposits we created is 1 million francs. So it means that the bigger the cash rate, the, 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 the cash ratio, the smaller will be the deposit expansion multiplier, and the smaller will be the ability of banks to create credit. Now, if we go through this process again carefully, uh, the formula Z equals 1 over R times C, where R is 5%, C is 100 thousand francs and uh, G is uh, 1 over 0 0.05 by 100,000 that gives uh, 2 million francs and for the B part we go through the same process again uh, we have the deposit expansion multiplier 10 and that gives a maximum level of bank deposit of uh, 1 million francs but now we now turn our attention to the limitations of uh, credit creation what are those factors that limit the ability of banks to create credit? Because banks always want to grant as much loans so as to create more credit and make more profit. But there are certain factors that limit the ability to do that. Among those factors, we have high required reserve ratio or high cash ratio. We have only demonstrated that when cash ratio is high, uh, deposit expansion multiplier reduces, and that reduces the ability of banks to create credit. Another policy or factor that means that we limit the ability of banks to create credit is tight or contractual monetary policy. That's monetary policy aims at reducing the supply of money. When the supply of money reduces, credit creation is limited because interest rate increases and discourages borrowing. Again, we have cash drain from the economy. So if people borrow money and walk the money out of the economy, then uh, credit creation will be limited. Because banks will not have enough liquidity to give out that loan when people come for loans. And then the next uh, factor is the need for collateral security. 
most customers who want loans, but unfortunately they don't have enough collateral or suitable collateral to back the loans. As a consequence, the bank may not be able to give out loans and that limit credit creation. We have high liquidity preference when people prefer to keep their money at home instead of keeping the bank. So when you save at home rather than saving the bank, when you hold, then it deprives the bank of liquidity and as a consequence, limit credit creation. I will also have lack of confidence in the banks, in commercial banks. So when people don't have confidence in the commercial banks, they will simply not keep their money in the bank. And so banks don't have enough liquidity. And finally, we have precautionary reserve because sometimes banks may not be too sure of how much money that customers will be coming to ask uh, to withdraw from their account. And as a consequence, they may want to keep a certain amount above the normal cash ratio just for precaution. And this limits uh, credit creation. So, looking at the problems that banks have in the developing countries, uh, we have insufficient managerial and technical know-how, inability of customers of the bank to provide suitable collaterals, low income levels, lack of confidence in the banking system, and political instability are all factors that culminate to create problems for commercial banks. By way of summary, Crazy creation is the creation of bank deposits by commercial banks. And uh, the basic assumptions of crazy creation process is that banks maintain a fixed cash ratio, no cash drain, and banks are ready to lend at any time, as well as customers ready to borrow to save money in the bank at all times. And uh, finally, the maximum level of bank deposits we created from an initial deposit can be calculated using the formula 1 over R times C, where R is a cash ratio and C is the initial deposit. Okay, we'll now look at this uh, most choice questions to round up. One, which of the following is a limit to credit creation by commercial banks? A, buying of securities. B, the need for collaterals. C, increase in bank deposits and Z, increase in cash ratio. So the correct answer there is the need for collateral. It's a factor that greatly limits the ability of banks to create credit because most often customers who really come for loans may not have the suitable collateral to back those loans. Two, if an initial deposit in a commercial bank is 1 million francs and the cash ratio is 12.5%, the total amount of money this bank can create is, we have A, 12.5%, or 12.5 million francs, B, 80 million francs, C, 8 million francs, and D, uh, 80, sorry, B is 80,000 francs, C, 8 million francs, and D, 80 million francs. So the correct answer there, we will go by the formula again, D equals 1 over R times C, but we know R is 12.5%, which is equivalent to 0 0.125, and when we substitute that in the formula, we have 1 over 0 0.125 times 1 million francs dollars in deposit. That will give us 8, which is deposit expansion multiplier, times 1 million francs, which is 8 million francs. It means that the correct answer to that question is 8 million francs. Next question. Assume that a customer deposits 500,000 francs in his savings account in a local bank that maintains a cash ratio of 7%. How much loan can the bank grant from these deposits? So we have uh, A, 465,000 francs, B, 35,000 francs, C, 1,742,855 francs, and D, 965,000 francs. So again, going by the formula, Cash ratio is 7%, and the deposit, initial deposit C, is 500,000 francs. It means that the required reserve that the bank must hold would be 7% of 500,000 francs, which is 35,000 francs. So that is the amount of cash that the bank must keep from that deposit of 500,000 francs. That would mean that the loan, the amount that the bank can grant as loans, would be 500,000 minus 35,000, that gives 600, and there are 465,000. France. So the correct answer, 465,000 francs, which is uh, A. Last question. To discount a bill means A, to sell it when it's D, 
when it has declined in face value, B, to sell it at constant rate, C, purchase it at more than the value on maturity, and D, purchase it for less than the value on maturity. The correct answer there is D. So to discount a deal means to purchase it for less than its value on maturity. Okay, we conclude with this assignment. A. Explain the process of credit creation by commercial banks. B. State and explain any four factors that may limit the ability of banks to extend credit creation. Our next lesson is titled The Central Bank. <laughs> On a terre minga, ma terre nyum, on a terre ma jang, ma terre ndom, manetambia ninya ne injubiayen, gani bana, ma terre mot, gani la kiri water endom, esotina, bia dinkido, manetambia ninya ne injubiayen, tam tama mote tam zabike, tam tama tonge tam zabike, tam tam tama mote tam zabike. Manetambia ninyane injubiayen 